Okay, so we are here in Hong Kong and we're here with uh, Wing Sha, uh, photographer. Welcome, Wing. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, Wing Sha is a Hong Kong based photographer who's worked in fashion, film, and art. He studied his career as a graphic designer after studying at the Emily Carr Institute of Art and Design in Canada. Shah regularly contributes to numerous international fashion and art magazines, including ID UK, um, Tank UK, and Visionaries, um, among many other prestigious and influential publications. Shah has also been the exclusive photographer and graphic designer for Wong Kar Wai's films, including Happy Together, In the Mood for Love, Eros, and 2046. Also a director, he's directed several music videos, TV commercials, um, and he frequently contributes to numerous um, magazines. Wing has uh, worked with Louis Vuitton, Mason Margiela, Converse, Gap, Pepsi, A Bathing Ape, Nike, Adidas, Rolex, uh, Swarovski, and uh, L'Oreal. And in this episode, we're going to be finding out about Charles' upbringing, what sparked his creative interest in photography, how he made his break as uh, a photographer, and uh, what it's like working with some of the most prestigious fashion brands in the world and brands, his philosophies behind his works, uh, his creative process, and more. So, yeah, very, very exciting. And uh, <laughs> to start off, can you kind of take us back to your childhood, uh, where you were a creative child and child. that sort of thing? <laughs> I was just a normal child. I was, I was go up here in mm -hmm. Hong Kong. So I was in the boys' school. I was in the boys' school, uh, just a normal kid. I don't, I don't really study. I was a really lazy person. I, mm. I always love hang out with friends. Mm -hmm. We go a lot of uh, uh, like uh, we go play football. We go swimming. Or we, we always hang out. We always together with my friends. Mm -hmm. Were you born in Hong Kong? I was born in Hong grew Kong. Grew up in Hong Kong. Yeah, grew up in Hong Kong until uh, I think my. My my school doesn't. I didn't really focus on studying. Mm. I I thought, I thought my life is finished. Like I I'll be like super. Like I I don't know my future. I have no dream. I have no. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I'm going to do mm. until I think after high school high school graduate, I've. I, I find a like a kind of like art school I can keep on studying. Yeah. But I wasn't that concentrated, I wasn't that into the the art. Yeah. But that's the only thing I can do. Okay. Because the rest I'm so bad. Okay. So after a couple of years in the kind of like diploma and I think I start into the art and mm. design graphic design a little bit photography just a little bit this is in high school no after high school, after high school. like a uh, college a oh, college yeah. yeah and then i suddenly i i want to leave hong kong i think hong kong is not the place to study art mm. or design i think hong kong is i think it's a bit um isolated or yeah or 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 old school yeah or i don't think here is the place to study art mm. so that's why i i try so hard to leave hong kong mm. but my family cannot support me mm. at that moment so i try to find lots of job like during the college i have to do so many jobs i do freelance i help friends design logo t-shirts or mm. whatever window display or whatever I try my best so I keep some money I I then I go Canada mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I think okay. yeah 87 when I was like 20 around 20 okay um, and 
So you, you managed, you still managed to find jobs and work in Hong Kong, sort of in the creative industry. It wasn't exactly you expressing your creativity, your personal creativity, but it was way to get, you know, work and earn money doing what you love to do right. while saving up for your, yeah. for your trip. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And when I arrived in Canada, I have, the first thing I have to do is find a job. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have to pay my rent. Mm. So, uh, because I, 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 I was like a student visa, I, mm. I, shouldn't, I couldn't do it, actually. I, I sub, I'm not supposed to do it. Yeah. But I do it illegally. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and did you study English at school or? I was, I'm still very bad in English. I, I wasn't really study English. At school, a little bit, but I wasn't go to school. Mm. And then when, even I, when I was in Canada, I tried to study English, yeah. and all my classmates, yeah. they keep saying, "Oh, you come here for study art. Forget about mm. English. We understand your English. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just keep your <laughs> style. We we doesn't really care about your English, but we care about your design. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm more concentrated on design and." Maybe photography. Yeah. Did you do like a double major in? I do double major. I I first studied graphic design, and then uh, after two years, I find the school. I mean, the art department is more exciting. So I, I, I also at the same time I study fine art, photography, silk screen or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I try. I just study a lot of things mm. during the school. And uh, was the Emily Carr yeah. University, was that like a good course for? I didn't know. Did I thought know? I thought this is the only school I can afford okay. for the tuition. So that's why I picked that school. And okay. then I find that school is really good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because the, uh, at the moment, they, they were supported by the government. Oh, okay. So it's not many students, uh, yeah. So that's why, I mean, the whole class maybe only like twelve people, fourteen people. Mm. So we always hang out together, yeah. and and also the philosophy was really good. Mm -hmm. And how did you support yourself in Canada? Like, Canada, did, you, did you have another job? Six jobs. Six jobs a week. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I help people clean up their house. I go to you know the restaurant um, almost three night per week mm. to do the delivery I also try to help the, the, the store room and also help people to clean their and also I go to the park I do drawing for the oh yeah yeah on the street oh. I was like oh, okay. uh, doing oh. that kind of things so and did you get any creative jobs early no, on not at all no? not at all um, but I, I, I somehow I, I kept some money, so I, I go to New York every year, every yeah. summer. Oh yeah, because it's yeah quite quite close. close yeah. yeah, so I go to New York. I go to San Francisco mm. when I have a break. Yeah. So at, when I was in New York, I also do the sketch on the Central Park or okay. whatever. Okay. So I yeah I can manage the money, mm. and I can see the world. You know. In you know America, Toronto, I even go to Paris. You know. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And were you shooting at that time? At no, no. It's all like like I I sell stuff on the street. Oh, so this is just just uh, for summer holiday. You were just you were studying photography, studying graphic design. But yeah, but in I your holiday, you didn't... Of, uh, most of my job is like selling stuff. Okay, <laughs> like, and. On your holidays, did you shoot much, or not you just really. just travel, just experience? Yeah, just travel, go to museum. Okay, and um, and no, I, I met a lot of artists in New mm. York, like okay. Chinese painter, yeah. fine art people, you know. Okay, and uh, then when you graduated, did you? I mean, were you at while you were at college? Were you thinking, I need a figure out how I'm gonna make this my profession or yeah you were I just... think during the school period I 
I think I start to love the career being a designer. Mm. So after graduate, I actually, I have uh, a few friends, like seven people. Mm. We set up a company in oh, okay. Vancouver. I have a, I somehow I have a, I have a visa or something. Yeah. I can stay for a couple of years. Like a working visa. Yeah, working visa. So I, we start up a company in Vancouver mm -hmm. to do graphic design. Oh, okay. Yeah. You and your friends from college? Yeah, from a college uh, classmate. Okay. And, yeah. um, and how did that go? Was it? It like, wasn't successful that or? easy. Yeah. But uh, after half a year, I think it's getting better. Mm -hmm. We have more clients. We have some, yeah, some jobs. But just okay. Yeah. Not really not making successful. like lots of money, but just and then uh, like, yeah. suddenly one day we went to we went to we went to Chinatown for food, mm -hmm. and I bought a mag magazine in from the Chinatown in Chinatown, a Hong Kong magazine. So I looked at the magazine and say, "Wow, it's so bad. I mean, the design is so bad. So I want to go back Hong Kong mm. to do some stuff." And the whole company, my all my classmates, no, you have to stay here. You know, we work together. No, I have to go back. I have, to, you know, look at the magazine. <laughs> they need me. Yeah, yeah. So that during that week, I sold everything out, my car, wow. everything out, and I back to Hong Kong. After a week. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess that magazine, just seeing the magazine really inspired you. And are you normally like that once you kind of something inspires yeah, you yeah, and you know yeah, you're just yeah, gonna do it? Yeah, just going to do just it. go and do it. And uh, I have a strong feeling. You know. Yeah. So you follow your intuition a lot. Yeah. And, like, and also because we have seven people in Vancouver. I say without me, you still have six more people. Mm. <laughs> you still have six people. Yeah, yeah. So Okay. Um it's funny. But this was uh after you graduated. After you graduated. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then you you came back to Hong after Kong after almost and... a year. I come okay. back. Okay, came back. And uh, then when you came back to Hong Kong, did you start your own graphic design business? Or... No, no. I after I I back to Hong Kong. I tried to look for a job, but at the same time, I I did a lot of interview, but some people doesn't really like my work. Mm and or they give me a really low pay like yeah they and then i just forget it i say and also at, a, at that moment my my sister's friend has a job for me it's a toy company okay just just doing some toy design toy not design. toy design just uh, paint the the, the car like a toy car yeah. this thing yeah really low pay but i enjoy the job because yeah. i had i got nothing to think about it, just paying the car every right. day right. Yeah. for i think half a year mm. and then because i i have to share a room i don't have a room in, at my mother's house mm. i have to stay in the sofa so that my mom said Hey, you suddenly come back, we don't have space for you. You stay in the sofa, but your, your father sometimes watch TV. Yeah. When you're sleeping, we cannot watch TV. Mm. So he said, why don't you find a job? Why don't you move out? Mm. So, okay. Then I, I redo my portfolio. I met some uh, uh, advertising company. I found a job from an uh, advertising company as a junior graphic designer mm. in the 4A company. Then I have uh, enough uh, salary to move out okay. from my family. Yeah. Okay. And now then I start with uh, graphic design. Yeah. But in an agency. In a yeah. in an advertising agency. How old were you at this point? Uh, I uh, how old I Yeah, when you were at the agency. Mm, I think 26 okay. something like that. Okay. 25 20 Five, twenty-six. Mm -hmm. And what kind of work were you doing at the agency? Just uh, at the moment, Hong Kong was uh, it was quite a lot of uh, opportunity. Oh, really? They have so many jobs. So when I was that that actually that company is is quite big. 
like a large, like a very famous company okay. called J. Water Thompson. Mm. So they have so many accounts. I take care of the subway, like an MTR. Yeah. Yeah. So I do all the graphic design for the subway billboard. Mm. So all the billboard design, even the t-shirt, the whatever event, I design everything, the graphics. That would have been pretty cool. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool your actually. Stuff and maybe your friends catching the subway and you're like, yeah, that's my work. You know, yeah. and also some shampoo, shampoo advertisement that design the logo and also like, uh, like uh, maybe a building catalog, like a uh, uh, a commercial building, the yeah. the catalog, the logo. I design their logo. Mm -hmm. So a lot, I have a lot to do. Did you enjoy that sort of work as well? I enjoy the the work, but I don't enjoy working in the agency mm. because I was trained like a fine art person. Mm. So when I work in the agency, they have so many to talk, just talking like pleasing the client. I wasn't enjoyed that mm. part. I wasn't used to it. Like yeah. I have to please you. Yeah. I thought I'm creating some logo for you. Yeah. But they they're not giving me the creative freedom. Creative freedom. So I have to please them. Whatever their color they love, whatever color I have to follow them. Mm. They because they pay for it. So I quit after a year. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz I guess uh especially in an advertising company. Yeah. They are very commercial. Yeah. I think uh, as artists, you want to kind of express yeah. yourself more. Maybe I was young. Maybe I was young. And design for yeah. yourself. And when you're at the agency, you're yeah. kind of Just, more about money, what's going to make yes, yes. the most money. So. And my, like my, 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 my senior just keeps saying, you have to listen to the client. Mm. You have to follow the client. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, not you, right. Yeah, like you're the designer. Yeah. 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 I, and I try, I work so hard. Like I remember I present a, a logo for a building. I did almost, I think, 60 or 70 logo mm -hmm. by one week. Yeah. I didn't sleep for a whole week. I did 60 logo. I present to the client. I, you know, each logo have a concept, you know. And after the presentation, he... He was like this, like holding a like a newspaper. He tear something from the newspaper. I said, "Can you can you copy this logo?" I said, "Fuck! <laughs> you want me to copy this logo? Yeah. Why you copy this logo? Yeah. I like this logo. Yeah. Can you copy it?" Yeah. I said, "Why you need me? You don't need me. You just need somebody to copy." So I yeah. I quit that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I also because um. <laughs> I studied a double major in graphic designer and photography as well. And uh, yeah, I felt I felt the same. Like, even though I was the designer, I still had to kind of follow what other people were saying. And then the end product, sometimes yeah. I just hated the end product. And I was like, I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, yeah, it's yeah, different with photography. And, I, and also because I was young, I, I think I was, and I'm, I'm too much, People, I'm, I'm the artist, I'm the designer, you know. You know so I, I try not, not to listen. So I have lots of argument with the senior. Mm. And uh, after you quit, is that when you started to think about photography no, as your I, career? Uh, no, I still don't know what to do. Okay. At the moment, I, I didn't, I, I never think I would be a photographer. Never, never. Oh, really? Yeah, I just think I will be the graphic design art director at the moment because, yeah, I think that makes money in Hong Kong. Mm. That's, yeah, that's, that's the only way I can survive, I thought. Then I quit, I quit, I quit the, the company. I, I went to the radio station. Radio station is like a TV station. Mm. I I work for them. I do all the event, concert design. They have concert every every weekend. They also do a lot of poster. They sometimes they have a 
advertisement in the newspaper, for example, uh, next week will be Typhoon, they have a full page advertisement because at the moment they, they, they have a lot of budget. Yeah. So they will say, oh, this radio take care of your, your take care of you, you know, mm -hmm. we, we always be with you, that kind of concept. So they have so many events, they have so many posters. To design, yeah, yeah. To design, so. And also, I did a magazine for that radio station. They have an English magazine. Yeah. About music. So I'm the, I'm the designer, art director for that magazine. Okay. So, yeah, I, I did, uh, yeah, yeah. We, you enjoyed that? I enjoy it so much because we have lots of freedom because there's no certain boss. Yeah. I have totally freedom and also we have so many um, sponsors because the magazine is the English station magazine mm -hmm. and they have so many live band and also there are so many people from outside Hong Kong they come to Hong Kong to perform you know like radio head so like whatever. things going on yeah, creative things I, can, I have a chance like... to take picture mm. and but I didn't know how to do it because I was studying photography, but I didn't know how to do the equipment. <laughs> oh, okay. Every time I just use automatic, I'm so bad mm. with technical. But I have to shoot it because we have no budget for hiring yeah. somody. Yeah. So sometimes I have to take picture of myself. And I, stop, I start loving shooting those musicians. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes like radio station, we have famous people come to the radio station. I yeah, take portrait yeah, for okay, them. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Was that because at the Emily Carr College, they didn't teach you the technical? It was they mostly like never. theory? Yeah. Like history yeah. and it's theory? Just talking, conceptual. Did you, um, did you wish they kind of taught you more technical stuff or you actually like the, the theory? I more? love it. The theory? Okay. I love it. Okay. I have no idea how to do it. Even the dark room, they don't teach you. You figure it out yourself. Oh, okay. Or you ask the technician. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's why sometimes I make mistakes myself because I I just do it this way because nobody teach me how to mm. do it. So yeah. So I, just trial and error. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So that's why when I start taking doing photography, I try not to listen to all the old school people. Yeah. You have to do this. You have to do the light like this. I nobody taught me. Mm -hmm. And were you looking at other photographers at the time uh, for inspiration, or you were just literally going out? You knew nothing, and you were just clicking and no, because. Uh, when I start working in a radio studio, I was like 26. I think I was like 26. Mm -hmm. And there's so many famous photographers in Hong Kong and so famous magazines, so many professional people. I'm just a new guy. I prefer to do something different than follow the, mm. the trend. And because I think my ego was so strong. Mm. Like I'm from Canada, I was artist. I was I'm like a fine art artist. Mm. I don't want to do stuff like this. Yeah, and also that moment, all the record cover is like like a portrait of an artist. Like I said, what what's the point? What why are you doing this? So always doing this. Yeah. I say, I fuck it. I say mm. I want to do completely different. So yeah. I try something else, mm. and because I don't know how to do it. I make so many mistakes and I love it. So every time I do mistake, I thought this is the, my last chance to work for this or work for magazine. So, and also some of the magazine, magazine asked me to do photography. So I always prepare this is my last time. Yeah. And sometimes because they have so many record, like album cover. Yeah. And they suddenly my friend, he, he's a famous DJ, he say, I have a I have a girlfriend. He's good. He's a singer. Do you mind to help her to do the photography? I say yeah, but I I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Don't don't worry about. It. I I hire a, a assistant for you. You just tell him do the lighting, do whatever you want, 
and he would teach you how to do it. Mm. So I did the first time and I love it. And second time he gave me a lot of opportunity. So I, I did a lot of album cover. Covers for like local, so for local yeah, mu mu pop music, basically. Okay. Sometimes band. Like, you're, you're a fan of music? Yeah, yeah, I always want to be a musician. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always. When I was young. What, what kind of music do you listen to? A lot, like, a lot of band. Like Just rock, local music? Rock, yeah, local music, rock. Uh, but at that, at, at my age, we love we love something really avant-garde. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you were listening to kind of local... Western, Western sometimes. Okay. Are they, um, what are some international artists that you enjoy listening to? Like, And I, I don't want to go to mainstream. I don't, I don't want to be like... Oh, like pop at the art, like, cutting edge. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cutting edge. Yeah. I think uh, that's something that a lot of creators feel like. I think we get bored. Of seeing the same thing, we want something different, different every time. Yeah. So whether it's music or photography or design, when yeah, you see something that's like unique, try something, it like pops out. Especially when I was in Canada, the school also the the school taught me to be different. Mm. So I look at like something really avant-garde, like Andy Warhol film, mm. like like Derek Jarman, like wow, <laughs> so avant-garde. David Carson. Yeah, yeah, David Carson. He he came to our school. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh okay, okay. Was is he Canadian? No, he is from um, Seattle. Oh Seattle. Oh okay. Yeah, David Carson. So you were Nova Body, you know. Oh yeah. Four AD, you know, that's the mm -hmm. brand we call Four AD. We listen to Four AD, you know, a lot. Something avant garde. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were going out. And uh, shooting these musicians and kind of in the other way, in the in the because I try to, I think I try to show off that I'm different. Yeah. So that's why when I shoot even the band like live band or whatever, I try to shoot something weird. How did you do that? Just like slow shutter or I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, just... yeah, I do so many way. Yeah, Sometimes because I... in uh, in photography, there's like in general, there's so many rules. Like, okay, get it sharp, get it in focus. Yeah, so uh, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so you just threw that out the window. Yeah, and, and also sometimes because I I, w I work for the radio station. When they have a live band, maybe the the the, the concert is owned by the radio station. They yeah. they they quit. So I might have a chance hide hiding with the drummer yeah. to shoot from his yeah. behind. Okay, okay, okay. So I always find a way to shoot something else. Like. So you're always uh, like yeah, try, breaking the rules. Yeah, try, try. I, 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 especially, I enjoy shooting them during the rehearsal. Mm. So I can go up on the stage with them. Yeah. Yeah, or interview behind the scene, mm -hmm. like makeup room or whatever. Do you find uh, you're kind of breaking the rules of what you've seen, and then maybe if you're shooting something and. Uh, You've already shot that thing before. You have to break your own yeah, yeah. style and, again yeah. and just keep breaking and yeah, refining. keep breaking. And also, I think I should do something not the other people can do. Yeah, I unique. just don't want to do what they're doing. Yeah, so I always I try so hard, try to show off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I guess the music scene was where you really found your footing with photography and like yeah because you could i guess with music you can really play around with shooting because right. you've got the crowd you've yeah. got the band you've got people like people's reactions to the music and it's no one kind of pays attention to you so you can really like experiment in that yeah, yeah, yeah. in that uh, environment mm. yeah I, I remember there's a concert like a, a concert like indie band local indie band concert yeah, poster. They asked me to do it. I just shoot the guy naked. <laughs> okay, cool. as a poster. Yeah, and uh, end up nobody buy the ticket <laughs> because <it's> too weird. <laughs> it's a naked boy, <laughs> so they find it too weird. Yeah, and my friend told me, "I'm so sorry, Wing. Nobody's buying the ticket." So how, how did you feel? They cancelled the show. 
How did you feel? <laughs> I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Yeah, because there's like, uh, I guess there's a line in yeah, art, yeah, like sometimes the cutting I, edge, maybe yeah. you're, you're too far on the spectrum of the cutting edge, and then if you're too yeah. basic, too commercial, then it's very yeah, boring. At, so. at the end, Hong Kong, I mean, the audience still different. I mean. hmm. Especially when I, when I designed the magazine, I try to like do what David Carson do. Oh yeah, breaking the rules. That the type is so small. You know, a lot of experimental design mm. cover. So yeah, just try to be different. Mm. Too much. <laughs> Making lots of mistakes. And I don't listen yeah. to uh, people's comment. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I what? I don't care. What? Uh, what feedback are you responding to? Is it your own? Feedback and your own thinking. You're like, if you think, okay, I, I want to change this, then you do it. Next time, you're not really listening to other people. It's more your own thought process. I think even like, the writer told me that we only have like four or five people for the magazine, two writer, two designer. I'm like a more like a senior. I'm mm -hmm. a junior. So the writer always. Talk to me like, oh, your your type is too small. Mm. We cannot read it. Yeah. I say, you, you can read it. You know, yeah. that's no problem. You know. Yeah. So I I never change. Yeah. I never you change. Changed? Yeah. Even the blur photo, I I make it so big. You know, the poster. I say, it's the mood. I don't listen to people. Yeah. When I shoot for a commercial magazine, I make it so dark, and they even the chief. Call, call me like the wow. image is too dark when I say dark is beautiful yeah I just don't listen and then how did they how did they respond did they did they have to get another they say I will never I don't I will never no they they publish it okay. I'll never you call you okay. again yeah. they'll say that and wow. I, I I I used to it I used to people tell me I'm not going to ask you again how did you find that confidence or is that something you always had you've always sort of done your own I just think thing? when I come back the reason I come back to do something different so I have to be that guy I have to be the guy who's different you've, all, you've always been that guy just no when uh, when I was Canada I wasn't that confident yeah I have confidence but I try not to and I wasn't that showing off yeah. But when I come back, I think uh, I'm the Kong one Kong. <laughs> come back. The reason I come back, I give up so many things. I come here to do something different. Mm. That's the purpose I come back. I came back. Okay. So that's why I say I'm, I'm not going to listen to you. To shake things up. In yeah, I'll do. Okay. You, but I really think the dark photo is beautiful. Mm. I really think so. Yeah. So the first they actually call me, they say, oh, we are not going to ask you again, mm -hmm. the photo is too dark. Even though I say, publish it, print it, it will be better. I lie too much. End up, it's really dark. And then suddenly, they, they have another cover. I don't understand, they call me again. Because mm -hmm. they have no choice or whatever, no photographer. Yeah. Okay. They have no choice, they ask me again. I do the same, I did the same thing. I make it dark again. <laughs> and the second time, they actually call me, they love it. Ooh. I actually love it. <laughs> you make this magazine very special because it's really dark. Yeah. And people are curious, why it's so dark? Mm. And they find it very pretty because the color is different. And then, and then they keep calling it's me unique, again. Yeah. again. Yeah. So at the very beginning, they don't used to it. They don't, they don't, un or they don't understand, or they don't, they don't prepare something different. But once they prepare, they accept me. Even the record cover, I say I'm not going to put any photo. I just use typography as a cover. Mm. They say, really? And especially the artist, it's a famous artist album. The artists have no schedule to come to Hong Kong for shooting. Mm. So they, they have no choice. They use my typography as a cover because the song is so nice they sell a lot and the cover becomes so famous so i have so many experience about 
this because they have no choice. No choice. Okay. No choice to shoot cover. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I have so many opportunity. I have so many. Yeah. And then, I guess you became I be that guy who was different. Yeah, I become I become a guy who always makes something different. Mm. So when they want to be different, they will call me. So then I become a bit so you kind famous. Of made these magazines yeah. cool. I make the magazine, whatever come to my company, I'm different. Mm -hmm. So that's why I I grew up with a few designer. Yeah. I push them to be different. So my my the, I was working for a guy for for uh for a design company. It's not my company. I work for them. Yeah. So I make the design uh, very different and especially i i i study from canada i i study a lot like their cousin or or immigrant immigrant mm -hmm. oh you see oh butterfly oh you like let's me. get the <laughs> <laughs> okay as especially especially i i i have so many i i did study a lot of their cousin Im immigrant. There's a magazine called Immigrant, and mm -hmm. also 4AD Design. I I bought everything to Hong Kong. I talked to the designer. They are so exciting. They enjoy a lot. We break through so many things. So yeah, we think, have four or five guys together. Do you think it's because you were living and working and studying in Canada that when you came to Hong Kong, they were kind of like, oh, he's been to Canada. He's kind of international they are more local yeah and i think that's my kind of like um maybe that's my mission to talk the, the local people be different yeah because especially that moment like at the 90s there's so many jobs there's too many opportunities so you fail one album it doesn't matter they have some other album to make money so nobody give a shit off what you design do you think it's because you went you traveled to say canada maybe got some influence from yeah American definitely style and, you, and you kind of brought that back to hong kong so yeah. you could you yeah could be i can different? yeah i think so i actually actually honestly that the school didn't taught me that much i study myself mm. they this is the philosophy they actually not teaching you mm. you you find your own way mm. they try not to teach you I I I was so angry about this. I say, oh. you, why you're not teaching me? You find yourself. You find yourself. You you go to the library. You find yourself. You find okay. your way. That's interesting. And then when I grow up, when I, after twenty years, I realize actually it's really good philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's a really good. They don't taught me how to do it. Then you, I can yeah. find my way. Yeah, you're creating your own worldview. Yeah, and you can. That's how. That's why I can break the tradition. Mm. They they never taught me how to do the collage. I do my own way, and then I become my style, yeah. rather than they taught oh, you. Yeah. You have to do this, 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 this. Then everybody do the same thing. Yeah, then everyone has the same style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never have a different style. Okay. So. And um, then after you were shooting, you know, for the radio station and the the music scene. Uh, you you got hired to shoot sort of other after things the magazine. And... Actually, after the radio station, two years I quit the radio station. I worked for that guy, yeah. the the graphic design company. Yeah, I work for the yeah I work for a small company. Yeah. but we do they do only album, mainly do album, because there's so many album in Hong Kong, yeah. so many like every week another new job, every wow. week another singer, wow. combination. Everybody buy record. Is nineties. Uh, like, uh, is Hong Kong known for its music scene? Uh, I think that moment, that yeah, mostly local. Just local. So everyone was kind of buying love, local yeah. music and going to shows. And, yeah. Okay. Is that is that kind of still the the case today? Or no, no, it, no, no, no. Uh, That's before Apple Music. Oh, Apple music. <laughs> oh okay. Before Spotify and all of that. Yeah, before Spotify. Oh, you have okay. you still have to pay, yeah, and to uh, buy the CD. And then you were yeah doing lots of work for these 
yeah. music artists and that sort music. of thing. And also you can reach the audience, like youth audience. Yeah. Because music. So I enjoy so well, so much. Because I hate not hate. I don't enjoy working for a bank, you know, a yeah, local you know, yeah. you know. You like the creative scene. I, I love the pop. I like the youth. Yeah. I like enjoy talking to the musician. I think the youth is always like the change. Yeah. And, and uh, they make yeah. make me young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I go to the record shop all the time buying record. I also when I go to Japan or London, I try to get more reference. Like I, you know, I always is, hang out with the music people. Is music like a big part of your inspiration? Yeah, for, work, for everybody. I think yeah, it, yeah everybody loves music yeah. at the moment. And we try also we try to be different. So we actually uh, we always when we have holiday we went to maybe Amsterdam mm. to see the graphic design show, buying the graphic design book from Amsterdam, London, you know, everywhere, Japan, and then we create our Hong Kong album design. And what was your next step after shooting music? Uh, because you eventually got into more. Was it fashion or no? Actually, after the magazine, I wasn't do too many photo because there's so many professional photographer in Hong Kong. Mm. I'm more like an art director. Yeah. Tell the photographer what to shoot. Mm. Mm. I'm more like a you know the concept guy. Yeah. So they are professional. Help me do the photo, but sometimes when they don't have budget, they ask me to do it because they don't have budget. A wing is like a backup. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind to be a backup because I I know shit about the studio. I don't have studio. I don't know how to do the light. I still don't know. Mm. I just have a concept, but I don't know. I just have a concept of the image. I yeah. tell the photographer my image is like this, and some reference. Can you help me? So normally somebody shoot for me. Mm. That okay. was around ninety seven. Okay, so you you're mostly mostly back I'm mostly up. yeah back up maybe uh, just once a year twice a year, okay like a backup person. So when they don't have budget, that means that that the album is really independent, mm -hmm. low budget. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I can, I can fuck around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> because they don't care. Yeah. Or combination, mm. they will sell a lot, so they don't mind. And the artist won't give you time to shoot the cover, so I have a lot of freedom. Yeah. So that's the best for me. And uh, then, how did you get to shoot the behind the scenes for one car? That, yeah, that, that that okay. During that time, we have so many album. I have so many chance to direct people, do the design. We 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 did almost over two hundred album that couple of years mm. and then suddenly my boss he's a DJ he's also an actor he's also a director he helped Wong Gawai to do a short film not yeah. short film independent film B he he was a director Wong mm. Gawai is a producer mm. so my my boss he said Wing can you come to shoot the still mm. I said I don't know how to do it just just go and do, just do normal photo yeah and then that's the first time he brought me to the shoot because no budget as well low budget so I bring my camera and then I met Wong Gawai and Wong Gawai asked me do you have portfolio yeah I, I show his my portfolio and then I did a little bit for my boss yeah and then after I also did another short film and then when Wong Gawai have a have a commercial for a fashion brand mm. so they they were they were shooting in Hong Kong so he asked me can you be the second union like backup backup still I said yeah why not so they have a Japanese photographer mm. so I, I'm more like a backup person okay. for the first time I helped Wang Gawai mm -hmm. to do the fashion brand okay. commercial okay so you at that time, you're kind of uh, still experiencing 
yeah. the creative world, like, okay, yeah, how does... Movie. To, how does the... TV uh, commercial. TV wow, commercial, it's, yeah. it's a big deal uh, for me. And uh, was that the first time you kind of entered the fashion scene a little bit? Was shooting yes, behind the yes, scenes? Yes, yes, kind of. I did a little bit magazine, fashion magazine, but just not many, but yeah. But I think this is the first time I connect with movie. Mm. Movie and a little bit fashion. And yeah. And did you enjoy shooting the behind the scenes stuff? I love stuff? it. I yeah. love it. Because I don't need to communicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nobody know I'm there. I yeah. was there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's yeah similar to shooting music. Like nobody really cares about yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody. You, so about. then you have more freedom because no one's like yeah, yeah, yeah. looking at you. You don't have to direct them with mm. people. So I enjoy so much. Mm. So after the first commercial, Wong Ka Wei prepared a movie in Argentina. He said, come with me to Argentina. Oh, wow. Oh, also, yeah. also a backup. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. And then I went. Those were happy together. Those were happy together. Okay. That, but that, that, that time I still work for the design company. So I have to talk to my boss. I need to have, take a break. I have a hot. I need to leave the company for a couple of months mm. to go Argentina, and he doesn't actually doesn't like it oh, because okay. I have to take care of the whole company. We yeah. have so many albums. Yeah, I said I have to. I want. I want to do it. Yeah. So I leave the company. I went oh, well, to okay. Argentina. Okay. Yeah. Was it um nineteen ninety seven ninety eight yeah. something like that? Was it? I suppose it would have been good uh, shooting behind the scenes because I mean they've kind of set up the shot in a way already, yeah. like the, the nice lighting, the color, the people's yeah. clothes. And I, and then and then I never get in touch with the movie industry. So when I arrive in Argentina, wow! The first day they are shooting the love scene, sexy. Mm, mm, wow. mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I was <laughs> my luggage was from the airport to the to the set. Yeah. I was just packed my camera, I just have to shoot it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know I have to do it that day. Yeah. It was so exciting. Yeah. And you were kind of like walking around the set. Yeah. Just... And then I don't know what to do. I asked Christopher Doyle. I said, what should I do? Hey, you look at the monitor. You should whatever I should. Yeah. You follow my, my frame, you know. So I learned from Christopher Doyle. Mm. Sometimes Wong Gawai taught me something. I catch the moment or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I learned during work working with them. Mm. Okay. And then you came back to Hong Kong, and did you did that change your outlook on photography a little bit? Maybe you maybe you're more like oh, I don't want to do design so much. I want to kind of do. Photography. I come back to Hong Kong, and uh, I left the company. Yeah. I left the company, and then I set up my own company. After Argentina, so yeah, I think around '97. So I set up my own company. I have uh, three, two or three designers with me. So at the moment, we do everything like photography. I I would do it, design. I would do it because after the Argentina, I help one guy to do the poster for mm. Happy Together. Yeah. I have a chance to work with, work for one guy. And also, I do a, also a concert poster. I have a lot of projects. And I'll, we have two or three designers. So they mainly focus on design, but I, I, I overlook everything. So I work so hard. Like, because daytime, I have to help. I still help Wong Ga Wai mm. to do some stuff. Nighttime, I have to do the design. And was Wong Kar Wai a famous director at the time in Hong Kong? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He always uh, famous. He's always, to me, he's my hero. Like yeah. Teacher, like mentor. So it was exciting for you, like yeah, working on set. And so was, like, I was a big so deal. nervous yeah. when I work with. I'm still nervous when I look when I meet him. Even now, wow. I still think, oh, he, oh, my teacher is coming. Like <laughs> I'm so nervous. Like, I'm still, still, still after you know thirty years. Okay. Um, what did what did he think of your images? Did he? He is very. I'll say he's a very good uh, teacher because he'll push you. He always push you. So whatever, every time I show him the image or design, mm, 
do more, do more. Mm. Especially for the first time I do is the Happy Together poster. I do 20, like put in his office. It's not right, do more. Mm. Another week, another 20 new poster. No, watch the film again, do more. So we do so many type fonts, design, whatever image I'll try my best do this all together, maybe single shot, we do too many. At the end, I did over a hundred poster. No way. I put everything in his office, hang on the wall, and until the dead night, he just asked, uh, I remember there's a Japanese lady, I think they do promotion, they are promotion people. One guy asked the lady, Japanese, choose one. And she choose that one. So just let, let, let the her, Japanese lady yeah. choose. And then that's the one. So do you think uh, Wong Kawa is a perfectionist? Would you say? Because from listening to that story, it sounds like you know he made you do a hundred posters, and then, which is you know uh, the signs of a perfectionist. But then, uh, when I see how he shoots the film, it's like he shoots handheld, and it's a lot of it. You know, just, I think he loved experimental. Yeah, but he wanted to push until. Your limit. Oh, the limit, and then choose from and from choose the, from the limit. So I guess he would have done a lot of shooting for the film, like shoot. That's why, right, yeah. Sometimes he take more time. Just, let's because do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah, experimental, oh. and he wants something new. Hmm. He always wants something new. When he look at the photo, can you do something new? Yeah. So I have to think, what is something new, and he will never give you an answer. Maybe sometimes. So, um, although you're somebody who doesn't really respond to people's feedback, Wong Kar Wai was somebody who you, you responded to. You're like, okay, Wong Kar Wai yeah, yeah, wants yeah. something different. I'm going to make something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, because, uh, like I said, I, I don't know much about technical. I mm. don't know much about how to do it. So I have to experiment myself. Yeah. I have to find a way myself. Yeah. What maybe different camera? I don't know. Try the four by five. Try Polaroid. Try different process. You know, I to find a way until he loves it. Are you still like that today? Are you still trying different things, or you kind of you have? I your still own... like it. Today. Oh, you still do it I today. still do this today, and especially when I when I like the project, I will use my style again, again, again. Does it get? Stressful? I mean, if I do, if of course if I work for Pepsi, I won't do it that yeah. way. Just the Pepsi, the artist. But when I do, oh, this is going to be a very interesting project, even though a commercial, I will try experimental. So if your if your name's sort of gonna be on it, then you're gonna use not your about the name. Freedom. I don't care my name. Mm. Yeah. But you said for the Pepsi, um, you because would shoot it. Because More sometimes, commercial. like after, you know, this is during this 20 years, 25 years, I will, I will find, I will find out some, some of my clients, if I want to help them, I, I should go this way to help them. Especially some really commercial. I think if I go this way, I help them to make their business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is okay. my surfacing. You want to help them achieve their goal. Yeah, achieve yeah. their goal. When I was young, I'm more selfish. I just want them to follow my direction. Ah, okay. Now I, okay. I respect my client. I listen okay. to my client. Okay, you want the, the word bigger, I change it. Okay. You want sharper, okay, I change it. But I need to know why. And also, sometimes I give them option. I give you one blur, one sharp. We'll figure it out later. I'll do that way. But I will, I will listen to people. So you don't break so many rules now. It was only when I you break are... when they have, they give me total freedom. Freedom, okay. And I, I really, I will separate them. Like this one, I do it for me myself. This one for you. If, for example, there's a magazine asked me like last year, they have, they want me to do a twenty-five cover. I say cool. Mm -hmm. 
So I give them 25 image during this 30 years. Completely like in completely chaotic. Yeah. And they love it. Yeah. So I did that that project I'm selfish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if they if they allow you. Yeah, like, if they allow me. Because I think normally it's the other way around. Like for me personally, I think when I learn photography, I'm like, okay, I gotta get it sharp, gotta have tick all these boxes for the rules if i'm doing a design i've got to you know make it you know achieve that goal but then uh as i've sort of grown or as most creative people grow and they find their style i think you'd normally be hired for your style and then that's when you have more sort of yeah I, freedom. I i have a i always have a thought about this style mm. so when i grow up i when i work for one guy, they think that's my style. That's not my style. That's because when I go to Argentina, the color is too gray. I mean, when I go to Argentina, the war is great. The whole, whole environment to me is too boring. So mm. that's why I do this process to make the film more young and pop and more, more val maybe more exciting. Mm. So that's why I do that process. After that process, so actually, the people, when they look at the, the, the color, they think, oh, that's Wing's color. Mm. That's not my color mm. because that's the environment give me the, yeah, yeah. the color. So sometimes I think, is that my style or that's not my style? And after when I do have in the mood for love, I make the film really magenta, very reddish, the whole movie. Mm. That's not my style because that's the film style mm. I tailor make for that film. So, what do you mean my style? People always name this is yours, but I say I said if I carry my style, it actually brought my freedom. Why I'm carrying my a style? Mm. So if I my whole life shooting just black and white, mm. I think it's really boring sometimes. Mm. Yeah. So I I try not to listen to this. I try. Not to have a style. Yeah. I have more freedom. I think uh, style is like the feeling you get from a photograph. Yeah. More, all, than, the, more yeah. than the visuals. Or, or when you was young, when you're new, they think, oh, this is yours. Mm. But I don't think that's mine. Mm. That's because Wong Gawa's costume is colorful, because the wallpaper is colorful, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Because the process is colorful. Mm. Because the film I picked is from the film, the Fuji film. Mm. So is it really my style? I, I don't know. But sometimes I try not to do this style again. Mm. Then I can experiment something else. If I like this style, people love this style, I keep doing this style, I will be doing the same thing again until now. When I look at your portfolio on your website, it's. Uh I don't see a consistency in like color and light per se, but there's a certain like mood yeah, 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 that comes yeah, through. Yeah. Yeah. People said that the mood is consistent. Yeah. The mood is your style. So yeah, yeah, yeah could be, could <laughs> so be. You don't, you don't really think about your style too much. You just... But that's from my, my, my breath. I think when I, when I look at the image, because the mood attract me. Yeah. So when the mood attract me, even though there's no people, and the mood of the street it attract me, so I, I do the photo. So maybe the mood is my style, mm. but sometimes it doesn't really matter to me. Like, and what was it like shooting in the mood for love on set? On set is completely different story than happy together. It's more cheap out, classic. So I and and because when I talk to Wong Gawai, yes, I try to make it. Maybe this is how I see Wong Gawai. I think his work is really avant-garde, modern, very modern. So when even though they're wearing a chi pao, I want to make it modern. So I talked to Wong Gawai, hey, what, do you have any idea about the steel? He said, red, red color, red represent the movie. Mm. So I went to Japan, I bought so many film stocks. I almost bought every brand. I bought all the brand one row. I went back Hong Kong. I, the first day they shoot, 
uh, had a number for now. I finished the whole stock. One film, one test, and then I saw Wong Gawai the test, and he picked one film. I love this film. Yeah, and that, and then I bought that film for the whole entire movie. No, no. Okay. Um, and then, so it also experimental the film texture because we don't have we don't use computer that much. Oh, okay. Where, where were you? Where would you get the film developed? Uh, sometimes, if I go to Japan for uh, work, I will bring everything to Japan to process. So it was Japan. all it was all film at the time. It's all film. It's all film. Because yeah, that was two thousand. I think that is the first digital camera. Hmm. That that small casino, yeah. Casio, right? That small yeah. two megabyte. <laughs> and on uh, with the in the mood for love behind the scenes images are you editing these at all or it's just kind of straight as you shoot them i didn't really manage because like i said i really scared of one guy mm. i really scared of my job like shit i really worry she will fire me every day so i keep shooting whatever making of whatever they're acting i keep shooting i shoot so many of them. Mm. and i show him every time you know when we have a break, I show him. Okay. Um, and also at that time, I help him. I help him to do the promotion, design, poster, the logo, even the album, the soundtrack, everything. We, our, I have a company. I help them. Okay. Yeah. And how did you break into the sort of fashion scene? I guess with uh, you know yeah. shooting on set, people are style yeah, and there's yeah. fashion that comes into play and you you mentioned yeah. you were shooting behind the scenes for uh Wong Kar Wai's uh commercials for fashion mm -hmm. um did you get I guess did you get recognized as Wong Kar Wai's photographer and then more people wanted to hire you because he was a recognized yeah uh, I think um when I work for Wong Kar Wai uh yeah some Jap Japanese they will come came to Hong Kong they asked me uh do you mind to shoot magazines? Yeah, I don't mind. Mm. For Japanese magazine, yeah, yeah, I would love to do it. And then I went to Japan. Uh, there's a very good magazine called Man's Non or something. And then I want to shoot it like a movie. So I'll create a story for the magazine. And I say, this, you are you know, the fighter, you know, your whatever storyline. And so because I'm also shoot, shooting, I was shooting the actor. So he's more like acting for me. Mm. So I, I, I love that kind of uh, effect. Like the guy is not posing for me. The yeah. guy is acting for yeah. me. So he never look at my camera because when you do acting, you, you don't look at the camera. So I love that kind of effect. Like you are like outsider mm. to look at a photo. Did you ever do street photography as a no, young I photographer? No, no, no. When you talk about photography, it sounds like someone who's like a natural street photographer because when you shoot street, there's yeah, yeah, no yeah. actors, it's yeah. very candid. They will never pose for you. <laughs> Don't pose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but your, your style of like shooting unposed people and like moving around and shooting yeah. on set, uh, that's kind of why I personally enjoy uh, shooting behind the scenes fashion because it reminds me of shooting street which i love to yeah, do i like because like you're moving and yeah. you're posing people and composing yeah and nobody cares about you you're like floating through the room and yeah. no one and then after anything. after i have a chance i have the chance one guy uh there's a french book asked one guy to do a photo shoot yeah for french book yeah. so one guy asked me to do as a photo Photographer. Yeah. So he direct the whole story. Okay. It was like a movie shooting. We have an actor, actress. We have William to do the all the all the clothes. He borrowed the clothes. He styled the the woman like like a movie. So he even he even say action. Yeah. When he say action, I keep shooting like a cameraman, and then the, the actress, the actor. They are more like acting. Yeah. And then one guy will say cut, and I stop stop shooting, and then it came out very nice. 
Mm. And then after that time, um, I want to do that this way. So every time I have a magazine ask me, I'll do the same style. I come up with a story. Yeah. I come up with a place, location, the lighting like a movie, a shoot for ID almost like 10 years, like that way. I go to so many places in China, Hong Kong, Shanghai. I shoot that way. I give a story to the actress. Uh, you are a singer. You are a band member. You know you want to escape the country. I give them yeah, a script. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they yeah, act. Yeah, I mean that's that's essentially what everything, every piece of art is. It's a, it's a story. Yeah. There's a there's a character. There's a scene. Yeah, there's a yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and when someone looks at a photograph. It's mm. it's a story as well, so yeah. yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and it can help. I think it can help yeah, people can, understand yeah. like. But how, some, how sometimes the model doesn't work doesn't work that way. They still look at the camera. <laughs> they still look at the camera because they're used to it. Mm. When they're holding a hand, they look at the camera. They don't they don't act. Yeah, they say I'm not an actor. I'm a model. Because I think, because I like it when, when if I'm shooting a model, for example, I shoot it in a way like. They're not really the main character. I think when they're when they're posing, maybe they're on the cover, they're a yeah. celebrity or something, and they're looking. Then it's like they're the the main character. But if they're in a story, and it's yeah. it's like somebody's watching them, they're yeah. not. Um, yeah, I love that way. I love that. Yeah. So since the since the French, because when I shoot for the Japanese, he still sometimes look look at the camera. Since the the French book, I I mostly do magazine without look at the camera. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, looking at your work, I think hardly yeah, no, hardly. Any, hardly any of them. But sometimes the I don't mind to try some portrait, like yeah. portrait portrait. I think it it does break the mood if they look at if they yes, look at the camera, especially from my cinematics. Yeah, because imagine if you're watching a movie and then they they look, yeah, at, they the look at the camera. <laughs> it just breaks the whole feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I still don't understand fashion that much, but this is the way I do work for fashion. Do you care about fashion, like the, the I industry? I care and... the fashion, but not the brand. I care about the shape, the color. Yeah. I I care about because he at the, at at the, at the same time the clothes. The look create my image, mm, mm. create my character. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so it's, it, yeah, it's a part it, of the story. Yeah, part of the attitude. Yeah. I mean the character, mm. because when I was shooting, when I was I was shooting, the 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 act the the singer. I say you are the band singer. So what she going to wear? Is yeah. is do you advise styling? Yeah, I sometimes? work for that. Uh, the when I shoot for ID. I always use the same stylist. Okay. She understand me so well. She is a Japanese. Mm. She, we always talk about story. This is the whatever you know story. What's they're, happening? What's yeah, happening? They okay. They're escaping and they're you know. So she create the image from the story. Mm. Is this ID Japan or uh, ID just London. all over? Oh, ID for ID yeah. London. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and. When you shot for uh, Vogue that first time, was that exciting for you? Did you? I'm did, so did, excited. Yeah. I enjoy so much because when you do, I I haven't started directing movies, so when I do this project, it's a big deal for me. I I have a chance to write a story. I have a chance to look at location. I check the location, the lighting, talk to the gaffer. How to do the light, the actor, uh, how about the, the standing people? Maybe I did a story about a band. I have two hundred extra on one photo, one photo. Wow. So I hired two hundred people as a, you know, like audience for the band. You know, I want to show so many hands <laughs> and shoot from the audience shoot on the stage, and of course the actress wear that clothes is for the fashion magazine. But the whole environment, the the, the feeling, that is more about movie. So you, you didn't care too much about the brand Vogue or anything like that. It's more like, or yeah. these big magazines, more like, oh, maybe they have a budget, so I can do so much more. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't really care about the brand sometimes. Yeah. I also sometimes doesn't because when I when I was shooting in the studio, I care about the detail of the clothes. Okay, the dress you have to show this part because it's very special. When I go for that style, like a cinematic style, doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. The people's attitude is matter. I mean, the emotion is matter. Mm -hmm. If the people emotion is there, the clothes suddenly become different. Part of the part, yeah, of, the part of the attitude. Yeah, part of the story. Mm -hmm. Not not like a. You know, mannequin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, from shooting uh, for Vogue, maybe is that how where ID sort of saw your work? You know, I start with ID first. I start with so ID first. ID okay. first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the French in between, and then I work for Italian Vogue. So your name sort China, of got, Vogue, got out there. Yeah, a lot of Vogue magazine. Sometimes. Even a small magazine from Paris, not small magazine, but independence magazine. I I work for French mm -hmm. because they love because the, they give me a chance to work in China every every different country traveling and traveling course, and also I can also discover the city. Yeah. So they give me lots of chance. Mm. So I love foreign magazine. Yeah. Because they also care about the location to show the audience. They won't don't want me to shoot in the studio. Do you find, uh, say, if you're, sh you're shooting for like a more foreign magazine, you have to travel there and experience the culture a little bit? Yeah, and shooting? also f it helps me. Yeah, like creative wise, because you're yeah. finding new new yeah. things. I did uh, one time for Times Times um, Time magazine, uh, yeah. New York Times New York Time magazine magazine. I would go to Beijing. I create a story. It was like a Shang, uh, no Shanghai. We went to Shanghai like a movie set, so we created Shanghai nineteen forty, but modern clothes. Yeah, yeah. So much fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, so fun. What is the one thing you're looking for in every photograph? Would you say like that kind of you're you're shooting you're shooting and then you're like oh that's it that the aha. I moment. always I give the. The story to the model or act, actor or actress, but I always look at people's face, especially their eyes. If their if their eyes show me the emotion mm. from the storyline, I care about this. Yeah. So so that's why I always doesn't look at the clothes. I look at their eyes because the eye also telling the story. Mm. They are not sure. They worried. They are happy or whatever. They're showing the emotion mm -hmm. to me. Has uh, fashion become one of your most favorite things to shoot? Because just looking at your portfolio, there's a lot of uh, fashion. I think fashion gives me opportunity. Yeah. Just more, it gives you but, more creative freedom. To yeah, play and also I think at the same time, I like it when fashion and movie combine together. If I shoot a movie like really old school with all old school clothing, maybe I find it boring. But with the fashion brand, with the 1940s Shanghai, yeah. it's really modern. So I love modern. Yeah. I love to make things modern. So that's why when I first shoot my first movie, I make the movie very modern mm. because the clothes. Yeah. Because I love fashion. Do you think? Uh with all your photography, you're shooting it like a movie, like every, not, every time. No, sometimes, like I said, I don't want to lock my by a style. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I would, suddenly I want to do completely different. Yeah. I would. It okay. depends on what magazine, what. Like what I said, the twenty-five cover. Mm -hmm. That's no model. That's no clothes. Mm. Only a landscape. Yeah. I love it. It's the okay. mood of Hong Kong landscape. So you're always looking for something different something that you've been different to, doing before. Doesn't yeah, matter. I can wait. I sometimes I wait for opportunity. This is the good opportunity to do this. Or sometimes I suddenly think maybe this opportunity to do something black and white, mm -hmm. or even use iPhone to shoot it. Why not okay. to break the rules? Okay. Yeah. 
have you always lived in Hong Kong and then you like travel to other places? I, lived, the I always lived in Hong Kong. Kong. I always travel Japan, especially sometimes in Japan, China a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I even work for Turkish world or whatever world. So yeah, they give me opportunity to travel. Because I don't think uh, all the demand for photography or creativity is sort of in Hong Kong. It's mostly yeah, maybe Paris or Japan or Shanghai. Um, did you ever, you know, maybe early on think about, oh, I have to live in London, I have to live in Paris? I try. I, I actually try when I start going, I, I think, oh, maybe I should be international. I try to carry my, I carry my portfolio to New York. Mm. I met so many agents. I met so many agents. I remember that 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 day, I carry a portfolio. I have to meet. I met a st stylist, and the stylist really like my work. Oh, maybe you have to go to show my boss. You have to go like by five thirty. You know, I have only half mm. an hour. I have to get a cab. Cab. It was ringing. I say, wow, I am so nervous because I only have half an hour, and it was ringing. I cannot get a taxi. And try, I try to light my cigarette. I want to calm down. I so I, I try to light my cigarette. The la I only have one more left. I, I light and the ring, <laughs> ring drop. Yep. Yeah, make my cigarette really wet. And I say fuck it. I'm not going to do it. Mm. And that day I throw my portfolio on the street. Okay. I say I'm not going to do it. The the, the, the I think the, the the sky tell me, or the God tell me. This is not your place. Mm. They try mm. to stop me or whatever. So I say, fuck it. I just back to Hong Kong. Okay, so you you kind of just stay in Hong Kong yeah. and you just fly fly and out. Then I, I, and then I met a, a French agent. I worked for a French agent for a few years. Okay. So I go to Paris almost like every two, two months mm. to do a like Lomio magazine. And sometimes I do for commercial. I worked for a couple few years in Paris. Uh, who are some maybe icons that you're like really proud you've you've worked with? Anybody I still like think that? the Wong Garway photo is I feel very proud. Like even now, people still showing the yeah. photo. It's, it's become a like classic. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe the movie is different from magazine. Magazine is seldom you look at the magazine again mm. until the you know or exhibition or the models exhibition or birthday yeah. people showing yeah. the models photo. So normally you don't go go back to the magazine. Yeah, but movie you can watch again. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's become like a like a worldwide classic. Yeah, especially film. from Wong Kar I don't know why people love yeah. always showing his photo. Yeah. And I don't know if you you know like the app TikTok and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like uh, oh, so yeah. much even yeah. uh, recently even last year like everybody's been inspired by like the visuals yeah, and like always. trying to make little TikTok. But it, it it is true. I mean, his movie really uh, inspire a lot of people. That's true, especially for you know the West. They look when they look at Hong Kong. They always, everybody know Wong Ga Wai. Mm. Even my daughter, she studied in London. Mm. She said, you know what, Dad? We are watching Wong Ga Wai's film in the school. I said, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they know it's your photo. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you think makes art stand the test of time in films or paintings or photographs? What is that element that... I think there's that? no rules. There's no much, or there's no certain thing it has to be. I think, yeah, I never thought about that. Even when we were shooting in the wood for love, we never thought that photo would last that long. Mm. We don't even think that movie will be successful. Mm. So when you, I think, when you're concentrating on doing things, when you love that moment doing things, that's the art. Yeah. That's the spirit there. Yeah. That's the most important. Because you don't know what. If you plan to shoot something, I plan to do a painting for. When your plan is different, then your real heart, like, 
you really enjoy it. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. But when you're really concentrated on doing things by no purpose. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, uh, kind of want to be in that, in that moment, yeah, in, in the that present moment. moment, creating. There's no real way to like plan, oh, I want to yeah, create yeah, this so it's going to yeah. last a long time. Yeah. Then you're kind of out of that moment. Yeah, yeah. That's, so. When you have a plan, they can show in your plan. They will show your purpose. That's an interesting thing about, oh, I'm just thinking of like street photography because it's almost impossible to plan yeah. like a street photograph because you're shooting like in the moment. Right, 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 right. You can, you can tell, like yeah. there's, a, there's a vibe, you can yeah. tell. But when you plan something, you don't know. Yeah, don't it's know. it feels inauthentic, feels yeah. kind of fake. Yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. So I remember that I met somebody also talk, talk to me like that. Like they look at my photo, they 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 know what you're thinking. It shows mm. your heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And. Um, now, sort of, where are you at in your career? I mean, you've shot for big brands like Louis Vuitton and like um, cool, like Bathing Ape yeah. and all these big magazines and everything. Uh, do you feel like you've achieved sort of achieved all your goals? And you know, of course, when you are young, you want to be successful. You want to be famous. That's normal, especially in Hong Kong. Hong Kong guy. I would never think I would be successful. I never think I can be rich to French folk. I never thought about it. I even don't never thought about I would be a photographer. So, so when you when you are young, you when you have an opportunity, you feel wow, I'm successful. So you was I, I work so hard to want to be successful, but I lost all my friendship. My family. I never have a time with my family. Mm. I never have a friend time with my friends. Even though my friend's wedding, I never attend my friend's <laughs> okay. wedding because I was shooting whatever in Thailand or whatever. Mm. I I gave up so many things for my career. So after when you're getting old, you know, fuck it. You know, I have to go back to my human. I'm human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just somebody's father. I'm just somebody's friend. I want to share my time with friends. So now, to me, the most important is become a human being, yeah. a normal person. Mm. So to me, those frame, those things doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. yeah. I think this 10 years, I changed a lot. Mm. Uh, maybe, yeah. I start, I remember around 10 years ago, I want to shoot something up represent love yeah so i went to india i shoot a lot of buddhism i want to shoot something from the buddhism to show me what love is about and then through the buddhism i wish out uh, some spiritual thing i study a lot i learn a lot from friends so now i'm more into personal projects uh I, i'm more into very basic human being okay. then even yeah. even i don't shoot it doesn't really matter i'm still i'm still living in the world okay. i'm still a human being breathing every day mm. you know so do you regret uh you know living that lifestyle of traveling shooting shooting for the big magazines and then missing out on uh life no life? if i don't have that part i don't have this part so I think this is the like yin and yang, this come together. Yeah. You have to go through this, then you realize this. So when I realize, I cry, mm. I mm. back to my friend, I'm so sorry guys, yeah. you know, we have to hang out together again. So I back to a normal person nowadays. Mm. I can turn down everything for job, mm -hmm. for friends. You know. So I think this is a package, you go through this package. Yeah, this part and then that part. Okay. But uh, when I ha when I'm into this, like attitude, like this, my photo ch also changed. Yeah. Become really peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. And are you still creating for fun? 
like, I still do some job, but mostly for commercial. But sometimes I still, for example, like a couple of years ago, I went to, um, maybe three years ago, I went to Peru. Mm -hmm. I went uh, living in the jungle. I shoot a lot of photos from oh, the jungle. Okay. I was in the uh, Amazon River. Okay. Yeah, I was shooting every. What was that for? For personal. Oh, just yeah, just okay, personal. So personal. I bring my personal. camera to, in the jungle. Okay. I shoot the tree and the sky, you know, uh, the river, the water. I okay. make uh, some video. What were you trying to discover with that project? Did I'm you have more, a goal in mind or a thing in mind, or you just you're just drawn to that? Place no, I and, think. As a human being, I'm getting old. I want to experience another side. Mm. Not about the famous brand, famous job, how much money you make, how much people like your photo. Let's say Just shooting, that's not shooting. important. Yeah. How to make me happy. Yeah. Make me to find something new mm. or discover more inside my heart. Yeah. Like when I was. I remember when, even though I was shooting a sunlight through the lips or a forest, I, I feel so much love mm. okay. from the na nature. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Does spirituality inspire your yeah, work? Yeah, a lot, a lot. So even though, so after when I shoot a portrait, I find any, anything inspire me from a human being mm. about love from the attitude or I find the God create so beautiful body, mm, mm. the world, even animal, the universe, yep. even a cat, a dog, you know, it's so beautiful, the plants, you know, I think this is a very good object for me. Yeah, I think that's kind yeah. of an important part of photography, like philosophical aspect, because yeah, essentially you're finding the beauty in everyday yeah. things, this chair yeah, or this It's not from this the plant. fashion yeah. brand, it's yeah. from the even, yeah. you know, simple at that. At, as, like this, Just you know. discovering the beauty in that. Yeah, in that it could be everywhere. Okay. Are you like a religious not person really. or just... No. Okay. But I, I, I did, uh, I did Drink the ayahuasca in Peru. Oh, okay. Many times. Okay. Can you tell us about that experience? I've yeah. watched lots of documentaries yeah. on that, and uh, apparently you meet like a being or something like that. It teaches you about your life. Yeah, and... teach you uh, so many things. Yeah. As I think ayahuasca is very tailored for each person, so everybody yeah. is different. Different. So especially I'm from you know sixties, you know. Mm. I, I born in the sixties, so my mother they haven't have good education. They taught me so many years, really maybe old fashioned. Mm. So I when I go through the I was kind of oh so many things in my heart is really old school. Yeah. I have to break it. I have to break my tradition. Like even though oh you have to be successful, I say why? Yeah, yeah. Why do I have to be successful? So I have to go through again it seems like yeah your whole yeah whole life, life you've just to, been like why learning and yeah. then breaking like learning a rule and then breaking the rule learning the rule yes and, yes my whole life yeah. is like this always break myself yeah yeah always like even though in i was god like i i drink i share with friends the next day i say last yesterday was wrong every day i discover something new so I think my whole life is breaking myself, my philosophy, your own, your own my boundaries. Own. So I enjoy so much. So that's why it changed me so many. I think this, especially this spiritual journey. Okay. So now you're where you are in your life right now. You're you're being a human being. I'm you're being a human being. I enjoy every and, moment. Like today, yeah, we are yeah. doing interview. I enjoy yeah. this part. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that moment. Like. I'm cooking for somebody I enjoy. I work for commercial, I enjoy so mm. much. Even though it's so boring, I still enjoy that boring. Well, what's wrong with boring? You know? Just being like, yeah, uh, just being yeah, boring. Yeah, being, appreciate everyone. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that. You know, okay. if I can survive in the, in the universe, I'm really appreciate. I'm still living here. So 
every moment is fun to me. So, yeah, and also, especially in Asia, you know, we have so many tradition. Oh, this is no, this is good, this is bad. Now I have to re, re you reinvent. <laughs> re, yeah. They're always reinventing. Yeah, reinventing us. I'm. I really have to throw away old ideas. And yeah, old that, that's no good. That's bad. I have to throw away. Mm. We discover again. But I think it's fun. Mm. Wing, thank you so much for yeah. doing the interview. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it's really cool chatting to you. Yeah, I think it's finding out it's about good. your life and everything. Yeah. At the end, we talk about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, thanks so much. And where can people find your you? Are you on? Uh, I, I think Instagram. Instagram, <laughs> Instagram. I'm more active in Instagram. Okay, I'll I'll put some links below. Okay. Yeah, thank Instagram. you. Thank you.